First, let's hear from the England captain, Joe Root. I've been speaking to him this morning, accompanied, I'm afraid, by my dogs. Uh, one of the perils of working from home, the window cleaner turned up just as we started, so I'm sorry about that. Anyway, I asked him about conditions that they're likely to face for this test match. It's a really impressive stadium for one. Um, you know, it's, it's huge. Um, it's, it looks really impressive aesthetically and... In terms of the ball, um, it's a little bit firmer. It seems to stay harder for longer than the, the red SG. Um, it's got like this plastic feel to it that, as a coat, as a lacquer, and it doesn't seem to um, to deteriorate like a, a red ball might. So, um, from that perspective, it, it it should it should offer a little bit more seam movement. It seems to swing a little bit longer conventionally, um, yeah. and I'd be very surprised if reverse swing comes into it. I, th- I think because of the due factor of day night cricket that you know the coating is there to protect the ball and and because of that it's it stays harder for longer so it might be more used to the seamers right so I'm going to ask you about the dew and is there you know, is, is there some evidence well the very small sample size of one training session under lights but <laughs> um you know we'll have more information after tonight but yes um it, it seems that the, the, there is a bit of dew around in the the latter parts of the of well due to be the latter parts of the game. So, um, you know, that could play a factor, whether it be for in aid of the, the, the seamers, whether it just speeds up the wicket slightly, whether it makes it more tricky for the spinners to grip the ball. There's a number of things that might come into it because of, you know, the lack of playing um, pink ball cricket here and, you know, not a lot of, of evidence of it. Uh, it's really hard to know. There's a lot of guessing going into things, but, you know, that makes it very exciting all the same. Yeah, it does. And I mean, is it making you rethink possible lineups and so on? I know you can't name 11, but I mean, is there a chance you might go with a more, a more seamer heavy attack? There is a chance, yeah. Um, I think we've got to be quite open minded. We've got to try and make sure that we pick you know, a combination of our. <laughs> What's going on with your dogs, Eric? Um, <laughs> hope you haven't recorded. <laughs> we've got to pick a combination of um, what we think our best our best team is to, to suit these conditions and, you know, really play to our strengths as a, as a team as well. Yeah. And just fitness wise, I mean, is Joffre Archer fit for instance? Has he recovered and, and, yeah, and Crawley, Crawley fit again? Everyone seems to be pulling up really well. Um, you know, it's, it's good that we've got another session to get in the bank and just to make sure, but everyone seems to be on track, which is really exciting, really promising. It's obviously nice to have the, the new guys come back into the, um, into the fold as well, brought energy into the bubble, um, which which is always good. So um, we feel like we're in a really good place heading into this game. How how have you sort of bounced back from from last week? I mean, you obviously moved, which is I suspect a good thing. Um, you know, new surroundings, new ground, new hotel room, and, and everything else. But as far as reflecting on what happened in that second test match, what what have you been talking about and and focusing on, and perhaps perhaps not focusing on quite so much? Yeah, I think we've been actually quite honest as a group. We've, we, I think it's really important that we, we try and stay as level as we can. Um, we, we've been on a brilliant run away from home, winning six consecutive games. Um, had three brilliant wins in the subcontinent coming into that test. And we feel like we've played a lot of really good cricket. Um, we knew those, ex- those conditions were very extreme and the majority of our batting lineup is slightly inexperienced and hasn't played a lot of cricket here. So we've got to draw that as a, as a real education, a real learn and, and develop quickly and know that those, those types of innings and experiences, they might not happen on day two like they did in, in that previous test, but we might come across um, challenging conditions like that on days three, four and five later on in a game. So to have that in the bank, to have discussed it, find methods of, of finding success and ways of scoring runs, on, on a service that's really important. Um, and, you know, we have to take that forward into the rest of the series and, and keep growing as a, as a team as much as we can. What, what about the importance of not being consumed by what happened there? I mean, talk of the pitch and you know, all the sort of those kind of by-play going on, the shenanigans. I mean, how, how important just to try and just cut all that out completely and just you know, refocus on being one, one and two to play? Well, it, it's it's not many opportunity. Uh, sorry, it's not many times you get this opportunity when you come to India to be one or going into a pink ball game, series massively uh, still on the line. It's it's a great position to be in, and you know, we worked hard to be to be where we are. Uh, and as I said, we've played some really good cricket. We've had a poor week, which we, we've had in England. You know, we're we're not the perfect team at the minute. We're we're probably not the best team in the world, but we're we're working very hard to get there. 
And it's the way that we've responded to those poor performances or, or tough weeks in the past is why are we getting better all the time? And um, having that attitude coming into this game, you know, I think will serve as well. So I think it's being quite realistic about things, um, knowing that there were, there were a few things that were against us. It would have been nice to have won that toss and back first and tried to make the most of, um, of that day one surface. I, I also think we, we could have been better with the ball in that first and on that first day and probably been a little bit tighter, made it a bit more difficult for them to um, to re relieve pressure on occasions, try and bowl a few more maidens and, and and bowl a few more balls at the same batter, try and you know, string 12 balls at one batter, for example, at, at each end and build pressure that way, try and force wickets through through patience. Um, but, you know, they're, they're all things that uh, we can take forward and learn from. And you know, I think that's why we've we've been... Um, having success in the recent past away from home is because we are learning all the time. Yeah. Oh, you, you've done all your data, of course, but I mean, the number of full tosses being bowled by the spinners, I mean, that's, it, it makes everyone's job difficult, not least yours in knowing where to put the fielders. I mean, presumably that's, that, that sort of consistency is something that you really do need some improvement in. Yeah, and I think that actually the consistency of our spinners is improving all the time. Um, you know, it's, it, you're looking at guys that have, have not played a huge amount of cricket coming into this winter. And you look at the progression that they've made throughout the games that, that we've had and everyone's getting better all the time. Um, you look at even, even the amount of cricket and the amount that they bowled in an English summer, it's very minimal. And that's mm. what we need to try and change. That's what we need to keep improving in our domestic game. Um, you know, when there's opportunities to, for spinners to go and learn their trade in county cricket, they, you know, that it'd be great to see them bowling. 40 overs every every um, county championship game and really learning their craft before they come into the international team. These guys are having to do it at the highest level against some of the best players of spin under huge amounts of pressure. And I think actually they're dealing with it very well. Um, and we are seeing progression and improvement all the time. Uh, and that's all you can ask of these uh, of, of anyone within, within this squad. Um, so, you know, I'm really pleased with the work that's going in. Uh, and I'm sure they're going to see further success from the spin department on this trip. If, if he plays, how are you going to deal with Don Bess? I mean, you, you had to drop him last week. I mean, taking 17 wickets, <laughs> he'll be the first to admit that, again, he wasn't the most consistent uh, with his bowl, perhaps. But to, 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 to drop somebody and then, and then to bring him back in maybe quite so quickly, how are you going to handle that? I think quite easily. You know, he's got a very good attitude. As do all, you know, all the, spin, the spinners. I think they've worked extremely well together. And you've got Moan's experience, who was brilliant in terms of speaking about how to perform in these conditions, calling on, on previous tours where he's had success and, and, and done very well in this part of the world. Him sharing that knowledge with our, our two more inexperienced spinners has, has paid dividends. And, you know, it, all their attitudes have been very good. They've been very understanding of what they need to do to get better all the time. Um, and, you know, I think he'll be better for that week, um, you know, trying to go away, work at a few things, talking about consistency. The way he's bowled is, is certainly a step forward in practice this, this time round. And if he gets an opportunity to play, I'm sure we'll see a progression again. We've got to remember where he is at his career, in his career. And, um, you know, that he will get better all the time. He's still very young. He's very exciting. And, you know, he's very ambitious as well. And that's, that's a great sign. That's what you want from young players. To talk, to talk about Moen, and I know that obviously there was one or two issues about that and, and him going home and so on. But on, on a wider point, Joe, how, how do you feel about players, and I'm not pointing fingers at anyone in particular, but players taking a rest from an England bubble but then coming back and playing in an IPL bubble? I mean, there's, there's a little bit of disquiet about that uh, over here, if I'm honest. I mean, isn't the first priority still England? It, it, it feels like it might not be. No, I think the priority is still England for these players. And I think you've got to understand what what it's what those guys have been through and what it's like touring um, in this environment. It is very tough for, for everyone. You know, you're away from your families for long periods of time. You're going from hotel to ground, from your room to the to the ground, and it, it, it eats away at guys. And I know we're very lucky and we're very privileged to get the opportunity to play. And, and there's a lot of people worse off than we are um, currently. But I think we we've got to be careful about associating what's happening further down the line with what's happening right now. And you know, it's been very, very clear that the players' welfare is very much at the forefront of, um, of everything that we're doing moving forward. And 
you know, that still maintains and, and still is very much the main focus. We've got to look after every single one of our players. Um, you know, that, that fits around rest and rotation, but it also fits around this too. And um, you know, I think that it's been managed pretty well, to be fair. And um, it is, you're looking at trying to make sure that guys are going to be in and around and performing at, at their peak in international cricket throughout a very, very long year where there's going to be large periods of time away from home, potentially even in England as well. So it's not necessarily just um, looking at what's in the immediate future, what's happening just after this tour, but also what's happening uh, in a year's time from now and making sure that when we, you know, when we turn up to Australia, when we turn up at the start of our test summer, guys are fit, fresh and ready. And, um, you know, able to perform at their best because they've had the opportunities to to go home and and relax and recover and, and mentally um you know get themselves right to, to perform at their best uh, and just finally joe um you know it's a, it's a massive match this isn't it you know it's it, it, it could well be two one to either side with, with one to play given the way the pitches are being so you know thought, thoughts on that going into the, this this game i think every test match is a huge one I think the most important thing we can do is make sure that we we start as well as we possibly can. We try and I know it's a bit cliche, but we try and exploit the the conditions that you know get presented to us as, as best as possible. If that's by going out there batting first and making a big first inning score, you know, it's, it's being skillful and patient enough to go and do that. And similarly with the ball in hand, you know, we've we've got plenty of of, of very skillful players that that will want to to try and make the most of a. A pink ball that seems to be doing a lot more than the, the red SG, um, you know, and, and they'll want to make an impact in the game. So um, we've seen that the, there have been passage of plays throughout the pink ball test matches that they have been all around the world where things can happen very quickly. It's being aware of that. Um, if you can get the right side of it and, and really pay that in your favour, then um, you know, it gives you a great chance of, of getting ahead in the game. That was Joe Root speaking to me and the dogs this morning. And now let's speak to Prakash Wakanka, who's out there in India. There's been lots of chatter here, Prakash, about uh, I don't know, rest and rotation and mowing coming back and that sort of thing. What's what's been the main talking points over in your part of the world since uh, since England since uh, India's victory? Well, to be honest with you, I think there's uh, the the single biggest conversation that I've heard has been about the fact that there's been no cricket for a few days and people are getting very edgy. Oh, <laughs> there's really? lots of stuff on on social media saying, okay, why can't they just play like a, a little practice game here or there, put it on the television? Because I think, uh, Agus, this pandemic is showing that people are desperate to get something that gives them enjoyment. And I think the cricket in the first two tests has been fantastic. They're hoping for more of the same. But on a more serious note, I think there is a, a healthy regard for England's abilities, particularly in this test match, day, night, under lights, pink ball, and all of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, Root said to me, look, they've only had one practice. But he did sound quite encouraged, I think, by what they've come across there. Talking about the the ball, actually, perhaps the, the lacquer lasting a bit longer, the, the dew, a bit of an unknown quantity. But I said, yeah, there was, there was a little bit and so on. I mean, you know, there, there are so few of these games that played around and inevitably conditions are very different here as opposed to Ahmedabad, as opposed to Adelaide, or, and, and the weather even in those places might be different. So have we got any idea really what we might expect from this, do you think? Well, I, I wish I did, but I mean, <laughs> you know, the, 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 your guess is as good as mine. But I think a couple of facts, I guess, that I can say speak with reasonable confidence. Uh, the lacquer on the SG ping ball is significantly more than it is on the Kookaburra. And, and what that, uh, I'm told, reliably does is it actually doesn't allow the ball to be polished, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, when we were kids growing up, we always wanted that, uh, that mark on our trousers to show our parents we'd done a good day's work. Yes. But that doesn't happen that much. And therefore, the reverse swing element of an abrasive pitch uh, may not come into play as much as, as one would expect in a typical game. The second aspect is how much grass are they going to keep? I mean, I remember when the first pink ball test was played in Kolkata, uh, there was a lot of talk about six millimeters of grass so that the you know pink ball doesn't sort of lose color and doesn't get the black spots on it, etc. Uh, I, I think they're going to cut it down to as much as possibly they can because uh, India would like, no doubt, to repeat the recipe 
of the of the second test match but of course they've got a completely different core ingredient in the pink ball and i suspect with the dew factor that uh, i'm sure joe root mentioned in that interview as well uh, i suspect the challenge is really finding the right 11 it'd be great if everybody could be allowed 12 players so you could have a spinner and a a uh, fast bowler in the back back pocket and use them when you need them. But I think that's going to be a challenge. The selection conundrum will, will be there. The pink ball will play its role. But I think India would be stupid, in my view, to go with anything other than what they feel is their best chance, which is ball turning at least from the first morning, if not the first hour. Yeah, you say that. And yet, I mean, that's that's definitely sort of a way of looking at India in years gone by. But you look at the look at the pace attack that they could put out now. Um, yeah. you know, real proper quality to to you know combat and and, and certainly be as, you know as good as England in those conditions. Cool it Yata, if you wonder if there is a bit of grass around, whether they need him, they could play another another quick bowler. I mean, it's it's not like the old days where it, it, uh, India was sort of one dimensional bowlers, is it? No, no, certainly not. But I think where it comes down to, Agus, will be who has the better spinners, and mm. more importantly which batting side has the better skill against the spinning ball, especially if it's turning sharp. I think we know the and answer to that already. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what they're going to be banking on. How much they'll succeed, we don't know. Remember, it's a surface that they hasn't seen much cricket. Uh, it's a sort of cauldron of a stadium. Uh, and, and you know, 110,000 seats in it, etc. Uh, Ahmedabad at this time of the year will be a little bit on the cooler side in the evenings. Uh, and all of those factors, I think, just make it fascinating and in many ways, I think, neutralizes at least a part of the home advantage. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember, I mean, just explain to people, yes, it is, it, it's a new stadium, but not new, not a new playing area, is it? I mean, the pitch, no. the pitches are, are the same. I think the last time we went there, I remember the ball turning pretty sharply. It was it was the match, actually, that preceded uh, Alistair Cooks and Kevin Peterson's heroics in, in Mumbai the following game. Um, but England got, got heavily defeated in Ahmedabad. And I do remember it, it, did, it did turn quite sharply on that occasion. It did. In fact, uh, what, what I have now is I think there are uh, about 15 uh, or is it 11 strips on the square. Uh, and again, sort of a mix of the black soil and the red soil. I'm not sure which one they're going to be using tomorrow. But, uh, you know, because enough pictures haven't come out yet and we'll only know in the morning, I suppose, or later, late, late morning what the pitch is actually going to look like. Uh, but yes, I, I'm told again that because of the fact that this is a newly built stadium, the airflow... Uh, is, is obviously going to be very different. You yes. remember the old Motera was, was much more open, uh, much dustier. I suspect this outfield looks absolutely magnificent, at least in pictures. And and therefore, the, the opportunity for the English quicks, I suspect they'll go with three. I think India will will definitely have uh, Kuldeep Yadav being replaced by, by Bumrah. Whether or not they're going to be able to uh, sort of fit in uh, Hardik Pandya, is he going to come in? Is he, he's a bit like Stokes, isn't he? We don't know whether he's fit to yes. bowl or not, and, and so on. Umesh so Yadav's in the, back in the squad as well, isn't Umesh he? Yadav, yes, yeah. he is. And he's done very well in India, but he hasn't played since that uh, calf injury that he picked up in, in Australia, which is now almost a month old. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I guess, last time India played a pink ball test, I'm sure everybody in England particularly remembers what happened. No, I can't 36. remember that, Prakash. What happened? I can't 36 remember. 36 all out. <laughs> you want me to say it, don't you? <laughs> I was waiting for you to bring it up. I'm, I'm not going to tease you with that. Did you say 36? Oh, yeah, right. I, I can't remember. Was it? Yes, yes, I wonder, yes. I mean, I, you just have to park that, don't you? In in, in the same yeah, way that gone. England have got to park the last test match and, and, and not dwell on it too much. I mean, learn from it and, and learn yes. from your mistakes and where you can improve, but not not let it dwell on you too much. No, no, absolutely not. And and I think it's, you know, it, it's time for Pujara to get a big one. He hasn't got one for a while, even though he's batted for long periods of time. Last time India, England played there, if memory serves, I guess he got a double hundred. Yes. So, you know, he'll be looking to do something. Ishan Sharma is going to play his hundredth test, which will be a big occasion. Yep. Uh, let's hope he goes better than the way uh, uh, Nathan Lyon went in his hundred. <laughs> but, but the fact is, there's just so much to look forward to. And very rarely in India, I think, do we come to a situation on the eve of the game where so many imponderables and so many unknowns are still out there for both team managements and captains to weigh. Yep, which is what day-night test cricket does for you, actually, doesn't it? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really intriguing, it, it introduces all sorts of new things. Um, it, is Virat Kohli back in the nation's good books again? I mean, you know, they sort of welcomed him back with open arms after that, after that win. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, irrespective of uh, what Virat Kohli does, I mean, we say often, right, Indian cricket captains are next only to the prime minister of the country. Yes. And Virat Kohli is uh, certainly after that uh, loss might have had some ground to make up. But uh, I'm sure he's back in the good books. Not for everyone, but I'm sure uh, the vast majority uh, love him as much as they did before. Yeah. That's a word about... Um... About India, and and I'm not sure what the spectator situation is in Ahmedabad over the next few days in that massive, massive stadium. But while we're sort of on, we're looking a bit more optimistic about uh, welcoming crowds back and so on here uh, this coming summer, how, how, there's a bit of a change again in India, hasn't there, over the last couple of days? Yes, uh, there seems to be some preparatory action going on uh, with the fear of a second wave. Um, all all counts were improving for India, but it looks like in the last sort of eight, ten days, in various parts of the country, uh, there has been a little uh, spike in cases. So government, state governments are, are getting tighter. Some have already announced border restrictions. Uh, I know industries are, are working on, on managing the load, reducing work, work uh, availability in plants, etc. Uh, Ahmedabad has said they will have 50 percent attendance. Uh, all of that has been sold out, we understand. Right. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to so 50, see. 50,000 people. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 15,000 in Chennai made a huge racket. Yes. So I don't know if 50,000 will, will do in that stadium and what it does to the sound and so on and so forth. But I think, uh, you know, from a player's perspective, uh, it's, it's going to be a fantastic occasion to be able to play that first game in this brand new stadium. Remember the last time there was a public event there, it involved the now ex-president of the United States. This is the country where your people cheer on some of the world's greatest cricket players, from Suchin Tendulkar to Virat Kohli. The greatest in the world. <laughs> you look after so. yourself. Thank, thanks for joining us, Prakash.